Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Calvary, a couple that loves to play board games. And we like clay. Yes? We do. Even though we've never really done anything pottery related. I have. Maybe when you were younger, but I don't know if that counts. It counts. Together, we've never done anything. Well, it's a good activity for a date night. Maybe we should do that soon. Maybe. But until then, we can actually play this game because it's about pottery. And that one's called Sunrise at the Studios. Ho, ho, ho. Sunrise at the Studios is published by Pencil First Games, and it's a clayful game by Eduardo Baroff, Steve Finn, and Laura Bevan. A clayful game, get it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, this is a prototype version of a game that's coming to Kickstarter, so you can check that out in the link below. Uh, and know that some of the stuff you may see today may not be the final version of the game. Exactly. But with that said, let's give you a quick overview of how this game works. As always, you'll begin by setting up. Each player will have their personal area to manage, although you'll want to pay attention to the studio challenges and projects in the community area. Sunrise at the studio is played over the course of three days with three rounds in each, in which you'll collect and apply resources, complete projects, and aim to score the most points. Let's dive in, shall we? Each day, each player will receive 12 cards. These cards will be utilized for your three rounds. Now each round consists of four steps. Let's go over them. Step one, select resource cards. Now simultaneously, you and all the other players will draw four cards from your deck, choose one of your work styles, distribute resource cards, and of course, mark your choice with your studio mat. There's three different work styles here. Efficient allows you to keep three cards and pass one to the left. Measured allows you to keep two and pass one to the left and one to the right, and Wasteful allows you to keep one, discard two, and pass one to the right. Each work cell will be used only once per day. Step two, work on your projects. Simultaneously, you'll reveal all the resource cards you've obtained from step one and utilize them in your projects. Each resource will allow you to place a resource cube on the matching symbol on your projects. These will be different types of clay, glaze, and kilns used to fire your project. Additionally, you will find a wild resource, a choice of the two, or two resources on the card as well. Then you'll place your leftover resources into the reserve. At any point, you can use two resources in your reserve as any one resource is needed for a project. As you place resources, you'll discard the corresponding resource cards into the wastebasket. Step three, complete projects. Now this step is done in project order. For any completed projects, you'll determine the project order by comparing the icon on the top left. Your turn order is determined from lowest to highest project numbers. To complete a project, you'll return resources on that project to your personal supply. You'll flip the project to its completed side on the right side of the studio mat, and then choose a bonus action. Bonus actions include taking two projects, drawing and keeping an advantage and taking one project, or drawing three advantage cards to choose one to keep. Advantage cards are either kept for future use or used immediately. They can provide you show pieces to work on, resources to use, and more. Finally, you'll check to see if you've completed a studio challenge. The first player to complete a challenge will claim three points, while the rest will gain one. The last step is the end of the round, meaning you'll reset, continue to take an additional round, or you'll finish the day off if you've taken three rounds. After finishing the day, you'll remove your large tiles from your studio mats, resetting the three work styles, and shuffle and deal out 12 cards per player as before. At the end of the third day, the game comes to an end, and you're now ready to score. You'll first award and score the cup of coffee, then score points for your projects, studio challenges, advantage cards, and reserve resources. Any uncompleted projects will grant you a negative point. You'll tally the points, and the player with the most wins. So many pretty pieces of art. That's me. That's me making pottery. I think my favorite part would be the glazing of making painting everything. Oh. Yeah, because then you don't you don't really know what it comes out with because it feels like it gets like you put on really dull what feels like dull colors and then it comes out all cool and fun. And it's less painting is less messy than the actual clay part. Oh. It looks very messy. It all looks fun. I think I would like to try to make mugs. It'd be very fun. Anyways, let's talk about a few things that we liked about Sunrise at the studio. Here's three reasons you should check this game out. Number one, mechanics. This game, Sunrise at the Studios, mixes these like draft 
set collection and like goal completion, like mm -hmm. really into one tight knit mechanic that mm -hmm. feels really smooth. And when I say that, I mean, there's like several different mechanics that are layered into this game that often are seen in like heavier strategy games, I would mm -hmm. say. But in this, it seems so seamless that you're not really thinking about these mechanics and how difficult or complex they may be. I think specifically the work styles. The fact that you have to choose a different one each turn, but you have to choose all three throughout the course of a round is really interesting because typically uh, in a lot of lighter games, you would do the exact, everyone takes turns doing the exact same thing, but here you have the agency of choice. Mm -hmm. And your choice at the same time impacts other players. So that different dynamic is really, really fun to witness in a game that's only 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and for that reason, it's definitely worth checking out. Mm -hmm. Reason number two would be the theme, of course. Do you know of another clay glazing kilning game? I don't. Is it kilning? I think it's like burning. No. I have no idea. Do you burn the clay? Yeah. Flame it? Like blaze it? Blaze, fire up. The fire kiln. it up. Fire up the kiln. Fire up the kiln. Fire it. <laughs> but I don't know a lot of the games with this type of mechanic. And I think the beauty of having different mechanic, or different themes, sorry, not mechanics, uh, the beauty of having different themes across different games is we get to invite more people in. Yes. Because all of a sudden, if someone is an expert clay shaper, they can come in and say, oh, I know that kiln. I use that kiln every single day. And then there's a little bit of communication and community building and more games being enjoyed across the tabletops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the great thing about a theme that is like different from the rest is that it really invites in a different group of people while grabbing at the folks that really do enjoy these types of games. So it's always nice to have like a reason to expand out into different like hobbies, uh, touch and tackle into different things like that. Mm -hmm. And the last reason you should check this game out is of course, it fits the pencil first formula. Mm -hmm. Now this game feels like a lot of the other games from the pencil first line, including Herbaceous, Sunset Over Water, Sunset Over Water and Sunrise at the Studio are so similar, like it breaks my brain yeah, every time. It's hard to say. Floriferous and many yeah. more. And the best part is you can actually mix them all and have a fantastic game night or game day mm -hmm. playing all these games. Yep. Start with Sunrise, end with Sunset. You're golden. And then you can even have a paint night after to get those creative juices pumping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That Ilya nailed it right on the dot. I think the fun thing about this too is that they've included that uh, end of game bonus. It's the coffee cup. Or the coffee, I guess, because you get a latte type thing. <laughs> and if you have the most beans, you get that card. So it's like a small little thing that you can go move towards or work towards that is uh, prevalent in like all of those other pencil first games that we enjoy so much. Like the biscuit. Mm -hmm. mm. With that said, that is Sunrise at the studio. Mm -hmm. What sort of pottery will you make? What sort of glaze will you put on? What sort of kilns will you use? And the very most important question, Will you score the most points and win? Guess you'll have to play to find out. Well, if you want to learn more about Sunrise at the Studio or a couple of additional pocket-sized games coming from Pencil First Games, make sure to check out that Kickstarter down below. And for our question of the day, I would like to know what kind of hobbies do you enjoy outside of gaming that you've been really happy that have been brought in and slammed into a board game? And I would like to know if you've done pottery before and if you have any tips or fun experiences because that's what we'll be doing soon. Well, we'll see about that. Date <laughs> night Ooh. that Tyler will plan. Yes. Until next time, though, we will see you later. Have a good one. Bye.